Guys, our first guest tonight was the most feared kickoff returner in the NFL in 2001. He was feared even more by the Utes when he played at BYU, and he'll forever be a part of the Cougars' only 14-win season program history. Our pleasure to welcome the great Ronnie Jenkins to the Wise Guys. There he is, Ronnie. Thanks for joining us tonight. No problem. Thank you for having me. Good, good to have you with us. As, as, uh, as you watch a player like DeMar Hamlin go down with an injury like that last night, uh, what thoughts went through your mind as a player who, who competed out there at the, at the highest level? It's dangerous, and sometimes it can be devastating. Yeah, um, when I saw it, um, you know, I kind of first uh, obviously thought about him uh, and thought about if he had kids or – obviously his family, because I didn't really know what was, what was, what was going on. I didn't know if he was, you know, actually uh, my, my son's mother hit me up and actually told me what happened first. I wasn't watching the game. And that's when I started doing my research and then um, I looked into it and, and just felt bad. I just felt like, um, you know, cause me playing football, I had a, I had a kind of a similar incident when I played, um, I had a concussion, a real serious concussion, actually. Uh, I blacked out. I was knocked out for uh, maybe a minute or two. I don't know. But I thought about that. And I just, you know, it's just a dangerous sport. I think people kind of forget that because they're, you know, the the excitement of the game and, you know, fans out there, you know, we just, we watching the game because we love the game. But it really is a very serious, serious game. You know, Ronnie, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned um, that you first thought about him um, and, and you played at the highest level with, with success in the National Football League and played your whole life like I did. Um, we were just talking a minute ago about people watch from the stands or on TV and it's almost like these guys are, in, they're not human, they're superheroes and they're invincible and they don't think about the fact that they got families um, and kids and, and, and all of that. But, but something like this happens and maybe more people realize that these are human beings that that have all of that on the field, and we hope he has a full recovery. But but may, maybe that'll give people a, a, a little bit of pause to treat treat these people like humans with respect and and love. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking about this uh, earlier that uh, sometimes we get caught up in the 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 lights and the glamour of professional sport. And most people kind of look at the money and people make money and, you know, they don't look at us as real like live human beings that, you know, we make mistakes, we we cry, we laugh, we, we do everything that the average person does. And we also um, happen to play a sport that's very physical. And I think things like this, moments like this kind of put people kind of in reality and and they put things in perspective instead of looking at um the lights and the glamour of it they kind of should look at it like this is a very serious sport and we kind of do put our lives on the line because at any given time as you can see something can go wrong uh, you could get hit a certain way and and be done for the rest of your life um and it's a choice that we make you know i don't think we as athletes look at that choice um, I think we we just look at it like everyone else looks at it. Like we grow up, we want to play this game, we, we're having fun. And at the end of the day, we get to the professional level, we're getting paid to, to do something we love. We're not really thinking about all the risks that we actually take by playing this game. When you were at BYU, you were as fast as just about anybody that's ever come through here. And you took that speed into the NFL and, and as a great kickoff returner. When you're out there returning kicks, what separates everybody from the really, really good ones on a kickoff return? Um, that's a good question. Um, what separates? I mean, at the end of the day, football is a is a team sport. It's the ultimate team sport. So if you you have to have the right people out there to help you, you know, do your job. And once that happens. What separates us is, I think, the ability to read, read quickly, and be fast, extremely fast. <laughs> um, that's what separates. I, I, I mean, if, if I'm talking about myself, um, 
you know, the passion uh, played a big role into it. Uh, me being very passionate about being successful at what they allowed me to do. You know, they allowed me to play kick return. I, you know, I'm a running back, but I took what they gave me and I turned it into something um, positive. But it was a lot of passion behind myself and running the ball. Um, but what separated me from others was just um, probably I was much faster, more explosive than others. Yeah, Ron, Ronnie was flat out fast. We remember that. Yeah. Hey, hey, during that 2001 season, Ronnie, you not only set the Chargers season record, but you led the entire NFL, 1,541 return yards. Um, take us through what goes through your mind. When you catch the ball at the goal line, a high hanging kick, and you're ready to take off from the goal line, what, what are the things that go through your mind right as you're getting ready to return that? Well, when I obviously I know what kind of return we're running. So I'm just going to read. I'm going to read the, the block that I need to read. Unless some unless something goes wrong, I'm gonna just read uh, that block that I'm that I'm focused on, the one that's gonna get me to that second level. And once I do that, then I'm just, you know, I don't really think. I mean, really, to give you an example, um, uh, we played the New Orleans Saints, um, and I think it was my rookie year, and I got a return and I dropped the ball, and I picked it up, and I took it to the house, right? So my point is dropping that ball and picking it up, I wasn't even thinking. It's just something that happened. It was it was kind of like an outer body experience because I don't remember what happened. I just knew that I was on high alert once <laughs> I dropped it. You know, I knew I dropped it, but once I knew I dropped it, everything just kind of like took over. And once I got to that second, third level, it was over and, and and doing something like that, dropping a ball like that in an NFL game, being a rookie, it also gives you an extreme amount of um, uh, confidence. And from that point on, you know, before I get a return, I'm just so focused and I'm just trying to get to that second level because when I believe I get to the second level, I believe that I can get past any kicker or anybody that's in my way. So you had a 93-yard touchdown against the Raiders, an 83-yard touchdown against the Broncos, and a 72-yard return against the Bills. Which of those three meant the most? Against the Raiders. Yeah, how come? Uh, well, I grew up a Raider fan, <laughs> but playing for them, I, I hated them. Um, so I'm not a Raider fan no more. Um, to be honest with you, I, I love, you know, I don't, I don't hate them literally, but um, <laughs> they're a rival obviously. And, um, you know, there was a, there was a, there was a return that that game that I, I almost ran back and I got um, the kicker, I think was Jenna Kowski. He got me. So that second, the touchdown you just spoke of is the second time I had the return and I took it to the house, but it was more, um, you know, I was real focused that game. It was a rival. Um, I think you had 250 return yards in that game. Yeah, I think I broke a record. Yeah. I think, if I'm not <laughs> That's a good day right there. Good day for kick returns. <laughs> uh, hey, the, now you were with, you said that you don't like the Raiders, right? But the Raiders signed you after you run with the Chargers, right? They did. So, so you didn't, you didn't love the Raiders, but business is business, I guess, because after that 250 return yards, they, they felt like, well, we want that guy, and, and they signed you. Talk about the mindset of then going to the Raiders. Well, I should I should rewind. My dislike was after I was with the Raiders. Oh, gotcha. okay. Explain that then. So uh, I went to the Raiders on an emotional note because I didn't want to leave San Diego. I didn't feel like um, – I felt like at that part of my career, I was, I was still, I was going up. Um, my rookie year, I broke their return records. My second year, I broke that record was a pro bowl alternate led the league, like you said. So I just loved San Diego to be honest with you. And then when, when it happened, I was just so emotional and I knew that obviously if I go to the Raiders, we're going to play, the chargers twice, twice a year. So yeah. uh, that was a, on an emotional thing. But when I got there, 
you know, it was it was pretty much the downfall of the Raiders. Uh, the year before that, they had went to the Super Bowl and lost uh, against uh, Tampa, I believe. So I came the year after that, and that was the that was the year that they started losing basically. But my experience there was just not a good good experience to be honest with you. It's just. Yeah. It just wasn't a good experience, and you know, I got I kind of got out of character. Um, I've never been the type of player who um, I always just did what I was told and was coachable. Um, but the tension was very high there, and we just I got hurt, but I still was playing, getting shots in my ankle every uh, every week, and it just you know this was a bad experience and. Things got out of out of hand, and uh, me and the coach blew up on each other, and it just went nuts after that. So, it just wasn't a bad, a good experience for me. It sounds so, about right for Raiders. It just sounds yeah, that, it seems that, like a Raiders. Why does story that all right sound there? normal for the Raiders to <laughs> yeah. me? So, needless to say, Ronnie, your your best experience in the NFL was with the Chargers for certain, right? Absolutely, yeah. We're visiting with former BYU running back and NFL return man Ronnie Jenkins on the Wise Guys. Now, listen, let's go back to high school for a moment. You ran for 619 yards and seven touchdowns in a single game, setting a, a national record. Did the defense just take a knee that night, or what happened? Well, it was actually a good game. And it was actually on that defense, uh, a player by the name of Scott Fajita, who played in the NFL for a while, he was on that, that team, and a few other guys that got – uh, Division One scholarships was on that team, so they were a pretty good team, and the the game was pretty close. I mean, before it got out of hand uh, towards the end, but no, they were trying very hard to get me. I mean, once I like I said, once I get to that second that second level, it was pretty uh, hard to contain me um, because of my speed. Yeah, I was so much faster than everybody else. But it was a it was a good night. You know, it, it, everything panned out perfectly uh field position because to run that many yards on 30 carries you have to be you know positioned properly to get those many yards so we the, the kick returns was, wasn't happening and i was starting off at the 10 and 15 yard line so was, i was able to run these long runs and that's i think someone told me actually someone told me about two weeks ago that they were the person taking those stats at that game and i think that's that i had 400 yards at the half Jeez. Which I didn't know that, but you know, I they have ran out of up. ink. They ran out of ink in their pen. They had, that's, they yeah, that's crazy. That. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I'll tell you, Ronnie. It gave, it gave us. Uh, I can't even think about how many times when you were playing at BYU, we told that stat to fans that were watching on TV when we, when we were calling your games. We we would refer to that stat. It's such an eye popping, unbelievable national record that that we referred to it a bunch while you were playing. Um. You're coming out of high school, let's talk about your BYU experience a little bit. You, you, you take a chance on BYU, BYU takes a chance on you. What, what, what's the greatest lesson you learned at BYU uh, from your experience there and your time there with Lavelle Edwards? To be honest with you, I've thought about this a dozen times. You know, At first, I thought it was um, to be, becoming um, a better player because I did become a better player. Um, I thought it was the relationships, but if as a 45 year old man today, I can honestly say it made me grow up. It made me, um, become a, a man, really a better man. Um, and I say that because it's, you, you have to, as you know, my experience there and, and how things panned out, um, as a man today, you, you only can, you have to take accountability. You know, and, you know, you have to, when you sign up for something, you have to, you have to fulfill uh, your obligations. And that's what it kind of taught me is to, uh, no matter the situation, the circumstances, when you sign up for something, you finish. And that's what it taught me. Other than that, obviously, um, being a part of that team and being a part of Lavelle Edwards and Lavelle Edwards and Norm Chow, they taught me everything. Um, trust me, when I came out of high school, I was very raw. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have to block. I didn't have to learn defenses and all that type of stuff in high school. Um, 
So I didn't really know. I didn't know football until I got to BYU. I became a better football player at BYU, and I couldn't have done that um, if it wasn't for BYU and the coaching staff. And then outside of that, it's the players. Um, I was fortunate to be around a lot of really good people. Chad Lewis, um, who I really respect, um, Steve Sarkeesian, um, Brian McKenzie, Omar Morgan, Tim McTire, Shay, uh, John Tate, the list goes on. And just players, Etula Mealy. Um, that all adds up to 14 wins. You drop all those yeah. names. Yeah. You know, it's I'm very fortunate to be able to even say I was a part of that and, and being a big part of that um, just as a freshman, you know, just leading the team in touchdowns and, you know, just how Norm brought me along slow and me being impatient at first, but then learning why he was doing what he was doing. It was just really a good experience for me, to be honest with you. I, I can't really complain about my experience at BYU. What, what was what was the best of, of that? I mean, so you're 14 and one in your freshman season. You're named the WAC freshman of the year that year. Um, what surprised you the most or exceed your expectations of 14 wins, the fact that you had 733 yards, the fact that you scored 11 touchdowns and led the team scoring. Um, it was, did you expect any or all of that? Or, or what surprised you? What surprised me is that our team was, wasn't what I, you know, me growing up, teams looked a certain way. My teams that I was on looked a certain way. And, you know, it wasn't too many brothers on the team. So I'm thinking, man, we're not going, how are we going to play against Texas a and and beat these guys? <laughs> stuff like that. You know, ignorant stuff, ignorant stuff like that. But, but again, being there and once the pass was on and once I'm in this system, I'm seeing that none of that stuff matters. And that was the most, uh, the most uh, part of this whole thing that surprised me is that I learned that that stuff just doesn't matter, man. It don't matter what people look like. None of that stuff matters because John Tate is John Tate, and he he can be on any team and be and be dominant. And Etula Mealy and Chad Lewis can be on any team and be dominant. So it wasn't really what I did um, that surprised me. Um, I really didn't think about it. You know, I, I didn't think about being freshman of the year. I did, I wasn't you know I wasn't out there trying to to accomplish any of that. I just wanted to play. Um, and the way they brought me on, um, um, I'm thankful for because I was so adamant. Uh, I was just trying to play and play, but they brought me on along slow and it, everything just turned out, uh, wonderful, uh, for me and the team. Um, and on another note, uh, beating Utah was, a was a big thing. Um, um, I never lost against Utah. I don't like, I don't like them. <laughs> They're like I the learned. Raiders. They're like the Raiders, aren't they, Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, they're like the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> We're visiting with Ronnie Jenkins, former BYU running back, former NFL kickoff return specialist here in the Wise Guys. Men's volleyball coach Sean Olmstead's going to join us here in a couple of moments uh, in studio. That's coming up. Jimmer Fredette next week, Danny Ainge in two weeks as the Wise Guys rolls into the new year. And speaking of the Utes, so Ronnie, between you and Blaine, you guys are 6-0. and against Utah, and, and I've never lost to him either, so that makes us all undefeated against the youths. Why was that such a big deal? Um, well, uh, you know, I didn't know how big of a rival it was at first, uh, but leading up to that game, I was figuring it out. And just how we how we beat them, how we, how we did it. You know, we ran the ball uh, more than what we were used to, and me and Brian really put a number on them. And it just was a good feeling, man. Just me being a freshman and being in that type of game and being successful just was a big thing. And from that point on, I didn't like them, you know. In that game, Ronnie, I I called that game. And I remember um, talking to Norm Chow after the game. And, and if I remember right, um, we only threw the ball 12 times. So yeah. because you and Brian, just it was just like you, Brian, you, Brian, like back and forth. And Utah could not stop it. And and after the game, I asked Norm. I said, "What, what were you thinking?" And Norm said, "I got I, I got thinking, 
They can't stop this. And nothing is more frustrating than them knowing that we're going to do it. And we just crammed it down their throats anyhow. So I was just going to keep doing it until they stopped it. And they never stopped it. What, what does that feel like to just physically dominate someone like that? That you guys could have almost lined up and said, hey, this time I'm getting it. And Brian's leading up and we're running it off tackle and you can't stop it. Yeah. You know what? It's nothing like being in the zone, you know. And I think that that's what we were in. Me and Brian both, I think collectively we all were in the zone and we just knew they weren't going to stop us. You know, once once in football, you know, once you get that momentum and you just, that confidence that you build every time you can get a first down or a six-yard run, it's hard to stop a really good team from just continuing to just dominate you. And I think we're just in that zone, uh, us as running backs and the linemen, I think we're just in the zone. There's, there's, there's nothing they was going to do about it. BYU joins the Big 12 in September. How important will it be to run the football in that league? It's going to be important. Um, and, you know, I'm happy that BYU is actually, you know, stepping up and and looking for that, that competition too. But it's going to be a, a good thing for them to, you know, get some, um, some backs um, out there that could – that can you know really run the ball um because that's what they're known for uh the big 12 is is a is a beast of a conference uh, i think we'll be successful in it um but i think that you know get some get some fresh guys out there some get some speed out there i think that byu will do fine running the ball get them big traditional linemen that that byu usually gets they won't have no problems but what's your expectation like is there a win total in your mind that you're saying, hey, in the first year, I'd like to see him get this number of wins that, that would make you feel good about what they do next season? Um, yeah, I mean, I think they, because they're not going in this year, right? They're going into the following. This, ne this next fall, they're in. Yeah, this okay. is their first year this fall. Yeah. I think that um, being new, I think that even if they go – I don't know. I think they can win seven games. Yeah, seven or eight. We think would be a great year. I mean, yeah, yeah I think that'd be a great year. Yeah, and and you win seven or eight in that league, Ronnie. You go to, you go to much bigger bowls and play much better opponents in bowl games. So, so so seven or eight. Okay, so you're right with uh, Dave and I have been saying seven or eight. We'd feel really really good about. It, it sounds yeah. like you're on board with us on that one. Yeah, seven or eight would be will be a good a good season. Hey, a couple questions before Blaine hits you with five quick ones. Kyle Van Noy and Michael Davis, they're the Chargers now. Are they getting you free tickets down there, the sideline passes and taking care of former Charger alums? I, I'm able to go to these games if I want. Um, <laughs> they do reach out to me, but I don't typically go to the games anymore. Yeah. Honestly. No, nah, I don't. Really, I don't really watch football that much, to be honest with you. Really? I don't. I don't know why. I just, I, I don't know what it was. I just, you know. I don't really watch it that much. When you were, uh, hey, when when BYU gets in the Big Twelve, we need we need you back on board watching with us, brother. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna go to the games. I I'm I enjoy going to the BYU games more than I go would go to an NFL game. Yeah. The next time yeah. you're up for a BYU game, we'll have you on our game day set and uh, absolutely have you, you join. You, us. Cut, you anytime you want to come up, you know every, everybody will take care of you, but we'll give you we'll give you extra special treatment, have you come on game day with us, and everything. You yeah. want to come to any BYU game, of course. For so, sure. So, so, so Ronnie, true hey, or false? We have, we have a true or false for you. Okay. Is this true? Well, while you're at BYU, um, and you're you're running track there when you were there as well. Mm -hmm. Did you really want a four point one nine forty with a sore hamstring? That's the that's the legend. Um. Yeah, that's what I was told when I crossed the finish line. Um, I pulled up. I pulled up. I had a a ham string injury but when i crossed that line they said it was a 419 yeah. you ran the 40 and 4.19 i can't even yeah. drive the 40 that fast and you did it with a sore <laughs> hamstring i did it that is that is speed but that, and there dave is why when anybody asks me who's the fastest player that ever played at byu i always point right to ronnie right there ronnie Jenkins. right there hey tell us what so, you're up to what are you up to right now what's what's going on in your life um, I'm big on health right now. Um, I'm into, uh, CBD and, uh, legal, uh, cannabis dispensary. So I'm opening a dispensary Okay. in Oxnard, California. 
Um, so I've been going through this process for a couple of years, but um, this, you know, I'm into a, a kind of holistic way of healing and stuff like that. So I got involved with that a few years back and I got a license in the city from where I'm, where I'm from. Um, so that's what I'm into now. Just uh, gonna probably open uh, hopefully by April. Um, but yeah, you know, just CBD uh, waters and all kind of stuff that's good for the body. It's uh, that's a, a getting all the licensing and everything is a, is quite a monumental task. I have some really good friends in the business in Colorado. And I know that that's been, that was a really hard go to get that all done and take care of all the licensing, get it up and running, but they're doing great now. Um, sounds like you're on the tail end of all that and getting ready to get up and going. Well, it was a, it was a journey. Trust me. It was a, it was a, it was hard to, it's hard to get into this, this industry. Um, um, cost, you know, cost to be the boss, <laughs> but once, once everything is open, then that's when you kind of reap the benefits of, of that journey. Good, good. We wish you the best of success as you move forward with that. Blaine, you ready with five questions for the world famous and the fastest guy ever to play at BYU? 4.19 Ronnie, Ronnie Jenkins. That's what we're going to call him from now on. And <laughs> and so, Ronnie, these are just five quick questions we'll ask everybody, and you just the first thing that comes to your mind. So your favorite sports movie? You probably won't know what it is, but it's called Wildcats. Wildcats? Wildcats? I think I've heard yes. of that. I think it's I've heard of that. It's an old movie. Wildcats. I'm gonna have to go look that. I'm gonna have to go look that, that one would, up. Uh, yeah, who's the star of that? Wildcats. She's uh, what's her name? I think I know. It's uh, she was married to. Uh, hey, what's her name? Uh, 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 Kurt Russell. She was married to Kurt yeah, Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Married to Kurt Russell. Oh, so it's it's uh, a Goldie Hawn. I think uh, it is Goldie Hawn, isn't it? it? Might be her. Okay. I don't think they ever got married. I think they just lived together for a hundred years, is and their daughter is Kate Kate Hudson. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, Wildcats. By the okay, way, Ronnie, Wildcats, that's a good one. That's, that's the what, first one. We haven't one. had that one. That's a new one. So <laughs> your your favorite band or singer? Favorite band or singer? Um, my favorite singer, I would have to say Michael Jackson. Okay, your, your favorite breakfast cereal? O's. O's. Now, wait, do O's have sugar on them, or are they, like, really healthy? O's has these little clusters in the middle of the of the o and it's it's sugar yeah yes it's it's, it's okay. right there it's next level stuff because we know you're into good health <laughs> but we only respect people to eat sugar cereal because dave and i are sugar cereal addicts i don't eat cereal as much as i used to but when i do i'll eat a whole box a whole box of o's <laughs> all right i love it your, your favorite byu memory when chad lewis came back from his first year in the nfl and I was talking to him and Steve Young, and we took a picture together. That was a memorable moment for me. Yeah, Steve Young is, you know, a legend. Yeah. So um, is Chad. Yeah. And him acknowledging me and knowing who I was was big for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. No, Steve. Steve. Uh, We're going to tell hey, him he that still when he stays comes close on the show. To the program. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then. Um, the last one, your favorite running back of all time. Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. It's a good choice. How come? Besides the fact that he was as fast as you were. Yeah, yeah. I think that he was just ultimately the um, – he had everything from running the ball to catching the ball in space. I think he just – his um, – I mean, outside of – OJ, but I, I just picked Marshall over OJ, but he just brought everything, everything that I, that I like in a, in a running back he had, I mean, he, he could catch the ball better than most, been better than probably anyone. Uh, he can, he can run the ball just as good as anyone. So, um, Marshall Falk is my, is my favorite. He's, he was phenomenal. I, it, it's fun to talk to Derwin Gray about the matchups he had against Marshall when BYU and San Diego state used to go at it and, yeah. He would say, hard to get a decent angle on that guy. <laughs> so, he was tough. He Ronnie, was tough. That's a great one. Oh, awesome. Ronnie, Man, we proud appreciate of you. it, Ronnie. It's so great to have you on with us. Thank you. Connect back up with you. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. We'll do it again and again uh, this fall when you're up. Uh, let us know, yeah. and we'll uh, have you on our game day set and uh, 
and we'll get the fastest man on campus who's back on campus uh, to be Ooh. part of the show. But hey, we're proud of you. We're proud of how you represent BYU and uh, and your and your career and and your business. Now we wish you the best of luck, and and we'll see you again. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. All right. Ronnie Jenkins, you hand the ball to him, and he's heading around the right corner, Blaine. He's gone. 